Introduction You are in a department store with your parents. Your mother wants to pick up grocery. Your father wants to look at some paintings. You want some music DVDs for yourself. The three of you head in three different directions in the department store. Why? Because all the objects in the store are categorized into different sections according to their types. Such organization is convenient and leads to better management. In this lesson, we will learn in detail about the basis for classification of materials. What makes life interesting is its variety. Look around yourself. You see people of different regions speaking different languages, engaged in different professions, eating different food and pursuing different hobbies. That is not all. There is variety in all the goods that we use in our lives. Clothes that we wear are of different colors such as red, green, yellow, blue, etc. The containers we use for storage vary in shapes. They are conical, cylindrical, cuboidal, etc. The sofa sets and dining tables we use in our homes are made of wood or plastic. Based on our observation, we conclude that all objects have different shapes, color and properties. All objects are made of one or more materials. Clothes are designed from cotton, linen, jute, nylon, etc. We use glass, stainless steel or plastic crockery in our homes. Furniture is made of wood, plastic or even iron and stone. Leather, plastic, resin or jute is used to make bags, shoes and jackets. Vehicles such as scooters, cars, buses are made of steel. Therefore, we may say that objects around us are made up of a large variety of materials. A box is a cube or a cuboid, whereas a ball is a sphere. A laundry bag is cylindrical in shape, whereas a washing machine is cuboidal. Thus, we can say that we can classify objects on the basis of their shapes as well. Circular or spherical objects form one group, while cubical, cuboidal, square and rectangular objects form another group. Such a classification allows us to study and analyze the properties of different shapes. The first object you use as soon as you wake up is your toothbrush. Have you ever wondered what is it made up of? It is made up of plastic. The plate you have your breakfast in is made of melamine or stainless steel. The cupboard you keep your books or clothes in is made of iron or wood. The books that you read are made of paper. The shoes you wear are made of leather, canvas or resin. Thus, all the objects that we use in our day-to-day -day life can be classified on the basis of the raw materials used in making them. The water you drink to quench your thirst is liquid, whereas the food you eat is solid. The chilled juice you relish in summers is liquid, whereas the glass container you have it from is solid. The steaming hot milk you enjoy in winters is liquid, whereas the steam coming out of the milk is a gas. Thus, it is clear that all the objects that we see around us or use in our daily life can be classified into one of the three categories, solid, liquid and gas. We have been looking at the different basis for classifying objects, that is, materials. Have you wondered why such classification is important? In our everyday life, we come across many materials. Sorting materials into groups plays an important role in our daily life because it is easy to locate similar objects by placing them together. Sorting materials into groups also facilitates study of their properties and allows us to observe patterns in their behavior. Summary 
Let us summarize what we have learned. Objects around us are of different shapes, color and state. Objects are made of different materials. Objects can be classified on the basis of their shapes and color. They can be classified on the basis of the state of their matter. Yet another basis for classification is the raw material used to create objects. Sorting objects allows us to locate them easily. Sorting objects also allows us to study their properties 